the genesis of the Sprott Physical Copper Trust was our institutional investors who have enjoyed uh, our precious metals trust and our uranium trust asking if we could create a liquid exchange traded vehicle for silk, for copper. It was as simple as that. The market came to us and said, can you guys construct a product where it, it will be exchange traded, where it will be liquid and, and where the storage and transfer fees are low enough that it is affordable. Uh, this is really a circumstance where the market came to us and said, we will buy this product if you will create it. Uh, I think no doubt that the extraordinary success of this brought physical uranium trust is what caused the institutional investor around the world to say to Sprott, we need you to create a series of publicly listed liquid commodity trusts in addition to precious metals uh, and uranium. I don't have a favorite mid-tier silver producer. My favorite mid-tier wannabe silver producer is probably Pan American. Uh, I like it because of the potential upside optionality around a shut-in mine in Guatemala and another shut-in mine in Argentina, and also because of the, the balance sheet improvements that are taking place. But it's important to note that at least 60% of their revenues by now are gold, and that's true with most silver producers. There are uh, a group of much smaller developers. I'm thinking of companies like, uh, you know, Abra Silver, Visla Silver, Aya Silver, uh, that I think will do very well in a, a market where silver comes into favor. But in terms of mid-tier silver producers, I'm trying to think through. Uh, Hostchilds, uh, you have exposure to some fairly ugly localized political risk uh, in Peru. Uh, Fresnillo, which would statistically be my favorite. You have those same challenges in Mexico. The president of Mexico is openly hostile to the management of Fresnillo and Peñoles. You know, so that's a challenge. Fortuna Silver isn't a silver miner anymore. It's really a gold miner. It's tough to find a, a, a mid-tier silver producer that one can recommend with a straight face. You know, for uh, and it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that the Silver Institute will, will be there, uh, and they will be represented by Hecla Silver, which is a, a mid-tier silver name that, if you see an escalation in silver prices, is practically a brand name for silver. Uh, certainly, too, another brand name for silver would be First Majestic, uh, having spent seventy-five or eighty million dollars building a shareholder uh, cons uh, constituency around silver. Uh, those are companies that are likely to be successful in the silver bull market uh, as a consequence of this, their own silver constituency. That's important to note. Uh, I think what the question will find over time is that markets are bigger than politicians. When people talk about silver and gold manipulation, I remember back to the decade of the 70s, where trading desks manipulated the price of gold and silver up. Manipulation occurs in all markets, and the manipulators generally try to profit <clears throat> on the difference in scope and scale between the physical market and the futures market, the futures market being much larger, much more leveraged, and very prone to outsized moves as a consequence of moves in the physical market. Therefore, if you're trying to uh, profit on a down move in silver, you would build a ladder in the silver futures markets and then use a physical position, probably borrowed, to sell overnight during the period of time when the market is the least liquid to generate the most downward momentum in silver in the short term so that you could cover your futures positions as they reacted to what happens in the futures market. That exact same strategy happened in the decade of the 70s from a long point of view. The markets are manipulated in whatever direction the manipulators think will be easy to move. I wouldn't confuse yourself in the silver market by thinking that there was a four-decade-long conspiracy to depress the price of silver. They didn't have to do that because the market did it. The U.S. dollar was strong. You don't need to work really hard to cause something to decline that's going to decline of its own volition. I believe in 2022 that whole circumstance changed, and I believe at some point in the future that the short-term manipulation that happens in precious metals markets will be from the long, not the short side. Uh, not all the media, uh, and I don't think that there is as much overt manipulation of the formal media as people think there is. Uh, I think that perceptions uh, are forged in a 
odd alliance of big thinkers, you know, the World Economic Forum and all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't think that the leaders of government have to influence the media people too much because I think they went to the same schools and they hold the same value. Now, there are periods of time where governments can show favorites to media. But I would suggest to you that the whole emergence of social media has meant that there are sources of information and opinion that are disintermediated, <laughs> that are much, much, much more difficult to manipulate. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I am delighted with the proliferation of social media, irrespective of how much di misinformation, disinformation, and impoliteness that takes place in social media. The fact is that I can get unvarnished access to opinion leaders, opinion shapers, and to popular opinion itself via social media is that's one of the reasons why I'm so comforted by its emergence. When I look at popular media, uh, uh, broad media, even broad media that is al allegedly geared to me, uh, Dow Jones, Bloomberg, uh, places like that, I'm struck by the centric and complacent nature, uh, their bias. Uh, and I, uh, obviously I'm more concerned about state, overtly state controlled media, the CBC, the BBC, people like that. <clears throat> but I suspect again that there's uh, much less of an overt, um, control of the media because I don't think they need to overtly control it. I think the values of most media journalists and the values of most defenders of big government are precisely the same. There's no need to manipulate it because it's already there.